the the even options, within Christianity. even within Christianity, the options for personal growth, personal expression of spirituality, maintaining a relationship with the divine that is immediate mm -hmm. and intimate and right here, right now. And instructive. And informing your life in ways that help you be the person you can be. Mm -hmm. And that is part of what chaplaincy is about. And in those future um, instances, circumstances, I don't want to say opportunities, um, where they're once again perhaps in a similar place to making a choice mm -hmm. that previously got them incarcerated, uh, a belief system that allows them this time to say no. Or to make the other choice that would take them in a better place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they now have the tools for that and they don't automatically react. Mm -hmm. They begin to know how to respond. And theoretically, theoretically, hopefully, there would be a competent minister who could provide the support, the encouragement, the guidance to help them stay on that more constructive path. And that's what it's about. That's what we're there for. Um, we can't make them change. We can't make them acknowledge their relationship to the divine, to the divine. but we can be there as a resource. Mm -hmm. We can help them in their seeking. Mm -hmm. And it is them leading their life. Um, you know, the problem with ministers as authority figures, um, which is perhaps a more traditional perspective, is that any time the minister's not there, right. there is no authority. Exactly. <laughs> and there's no need for me to follow any of these rules. Mm -hmm. Well, if The authority needs to be inside. Right, exactly. That's where, and that's where the divine is. That's where the connection with the divine is. Mm -hmm. And that's you have to Jesus said, open the kingdom of up. God is within it's you. Within you. And when they can get that as a personal concept rather than it happens on Sundays when I bother to go and when there's a minister to tell me this is right and this is wrong mm -hmm. um, and otherwise it's just neutral, mm -hmm. no. Um, that has to be living within the individual for it to have any true meaning. And hopefully there are those that make that connection and they leave prison and they have a life and they become tax-paying citizens and and they move forward and don't do what they did before or anything even like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's the goal. Well, and hopefully if they become parents they don't raise children to repeat the pattern. We either. get that a lot from both our male and, and female um, offenders is that you know I don't want my kids doing what I did mm -hmm. and I know I have to clean up my act and become a role model for them Mm -hmm. or they will. There is too much already multi-generationality mm -hmm. in prison. Which I suppose leads to the recommendation from a lot of quarters that um, whether or not your denomination requires it, uh, a competent minister to me is always interested in developing psychological and sociological understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, always, you know, being a career minister, it's not about getting the job and sitting it until you retire. It's about each year becoming a better and better minister because you understand people more. And you understand how even the most subtle subconscious patterns can sometimes create within children the same mistakes mm -hmm. that erupted within the parents. Mm -hmm. And the parents may look at what's happening and say, where did this come from? Yeah, I well, did everything I could to prevent this from being repeated there's a different kind of nurturing that has to happen. And well, we don't and, always know how to do that. And chaplain is yet even more different than minister. Okay. Because chaplain has to take one step removed. And yes, you do minister to those of your faith. Mm -hmm. But as a chaplain, you have to be willing and able to address the needs of other faiths mm -hmm. without prejudice. Mm -hmm. Without bias? Without bias. And I have spoken to chaplains, both military and um, the federal correctional system, who say, you know, I could not go back to a congregation. Mm. I could not go back to being a minister because chaplain has taken me in, into a broader 
mm. deeper world. And most congregations want to know that you subscribe to the party line. Right. I mean, no offense to anyone who's in a congregation or is a congregational minister, but but it's one of the objective well, we want Well, we want to be safe and we want to know we're right and we want to be the same. Mm -hmm. And that's very much what a minister is doing. A chaplain has to wear several more hats with some level of comfort. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you have to facilitate something that you adamantly don't believe in. But you have to address the needs of the human being who is before you. Mm -hmm. Because to leave a human being with unmet needs is to sow the seed of a future problem. Absolutely. You, may, you help them become worse mm -hmm. rather than helping them to become better. If you can't meet the need, then find somebody who can. Who can. But exactly. get that need met or and for a lot of the seed of a future problem. That's their job. Not I can't help you, but I know someone who can, and I will bring that to you. Mm -hmm. you especially in the correctional system, but equally yeah. in the general public. Yeah. You may be the only point of reference, the only ears that a particular person ever finds. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they, in the, correct me if I'm wrong, but in a prison system, you can't pull out the yellow pages and go through ministers of all the different faiths. And if this one doesn't want to talk to you, I'll call that one. Well, the inmate can't, but the chaplain can. Mm -hmm. And that's the chaplain's job to go on a fishing expedition and find someone appropriate for the inmate's need. 